What's up guys? Today I got a pretty cool video that I want to share with y'all. Um, for those that's watched my channel for a while know that I am by no means a Harbor Freight fanboy. I've actually taught quite poorly of their tools in the past until recently when I got the Chief Air Grinder and I found it to be a very good tool. In fact, a very good tool for the money. Um, I'm quite proud of that one. So I've had a lot of response since that video to test the Chief Air Hammer. So today, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the Chief Long Barrel Air Hammer up against the Snap-on. We're gonna see who will fall and who will come out king of the hammers. So without any further ado, let's get into this thing. Alright guys, like I mentioned in the intro, today I'm going to be taking a look at the Chief Long Barrel Air Hammer. As some of you may know, Chief is the new line from Harbor Freight. It's kind of the upscale version of the central pneumatic that they've always had. Recently I got the four inch or four and a half inch angle grinder from Harbor Freight, their Chief line, and it is extremely, extremely powerful and extremely good tool. Since I released that video, I've had a lot of response from guys wanting to know about the air hammer, and I've also read a lot of positive comments about the air hammer, how good it is, how strong it is, all of that stuff. So I thought, hey, we'll put it to the test. I own this Snap-on. It is the PH3050B. This is their long barrel air hammer, and I've had it for quite a while. It's an extremely good air hammer, so we'll put it head to head against the chief and we'll just see what this bad boy is made out of. Now I know a lot of people has um, really praised the Matco air hammers in the past and they've talked about how good Matco is. I personally don't own a Matco air hammer. I have looked at them but I've never purchased one because I did have the snap on. But recently I was wanting to add a bigger long barrel air hammer to the service truck so that's where we are today with the chief. So I will put these two head to head um, to make it a fair comparison, I will be using a brand new chisel, flat chisel bit. And what we'll do, we'll cut a bolt in half with it and just see how well it works. So before we get started that, with that, I want to run over some specs between the Snap-on and the Chief. And also uh, throw the Matco in here as kind of a mix of all of them. So I'll put some cards on the screen and that way you guys can see it. They're all four of one shank, so that's exactly the same. The Chief rings in at $129. The Snap-on is $458.95. The Matco is $429.95. So as you can see, it's a huge difference in price between all three of these air hammers with the Chief coming in extremely lower than the rest. So let's talk about the blows per minute. I know uh, that and kind of air consumption is some of the bigger topics, as you will, when it comes to air hammers. So we'll compare all three of those with how many blows per minute and how much air they consume. So we'll start off with the Chief. It's rated at 2,800 blows per minute with 2.9 CFM. The Snap-on is rated at 2,500 blows per minute with 2.1 CFM. So the CFM is slightly less on the Snap-on than the Chief. And the Matco rings in at a whopping 2,300 blows per minute with 5.75 cubic feet per minute of air consumption. So the Matco is the slower of the three that consumes more air. The Snap-on is slower beats per minute than the Chief and consumes just a little bit less air. So now 
let's talk about the length of stroke on them. The Chief claims to have four inches of stroke. The Snap-on has three inches of stroke and the Matco has three and three quarter inches of stroke. Uh, the recommended air pressure across all three is 90 PSI. Uh, one of the next things is kind of decibel levels of the air hammers as far as the sound with them being used. Unfortunately, Chief does not put the decibel level on the package or the website, but Snap-on claims a 91.4 decibels and the Matco is 108 decibels. But we should be able to tell a little bit of that once we run the test here in the shop just to see, kind of compare between the two. You should be able to tell a little bit of difference. Oh, one, one other thing I do want to mention, all of them have the quick chucks, as you can see, where you just pull it back and insert the bit. Um, when you get the chief, the chuck will be unscrewed. If you notice, it's the same thread if you guys prefer the spring type ends which i don't know why you would because they are terrible the chuck ends are, are much better but um they all three have the quick chucks so that's all the same across the board with them it's showing it has a anti-vibration technology for greater comfort the four inch barrel provides 60 percent greater force per impact now on the box if you notice they have a star out beside it and that notates that it is 65% more force per impact compared to the central pneumatic medium barrel air hammer. So, you know, that's apples to oranges in my opinion, a, a long barrel versus a medium barrel, you know, plus everybody knows the central pneumatic is kind of a the bottom rung of the Harbor Freight air tool. So I don't even know that that's a valid bragging point, but we'll put it to the test and we'll see. But it claims to be lightweight, rugged die cast aluminum body, a variable speed trigger for precise control and a comfortable rubber grip on the handle. Now I will give them this. It does feel good in the hand and I do like the rubber grip that's on the handle, but the truth is in the pudding as to be told and we will see how it does compared to the Snap-on. We'll go out here in the shop, we'll put it head to head, brand new bit, we'll oil both of them, everything will be exactly the same, and we'll see who cuts through the bolt the best, and go from there. So, let's go. All right, guys, like I mentioned back in the studio, what we're going to do, we're going to be putting the Chief Air Hammer up against the Snap-on Air Hammer, and we're going to see who does it better. It's kind of hard to judge an Air Hammer test because everything's kind of different what you use an Air Hammer for, but today we're going to be testing its cutting properties. And what I have here is just a regular bolt. We'll lock it down in the vise, and we'll use the flat chisel to go across and kind of judge how long it takes to cut through the bolt. Or we'll run it for like 10 seconds, I'll count out loud, and we'll see who does the most damage. Just because of the differences in the metal that you may be cutting or trying to cut when using an air hammer, I decided that we would try to use a piece of rebar as well. Rebar is pretty soft, so it should make a huge dent in it over a 10 second count period. And that way we can kind of see who hits the hardest. So the first thing obviously we need to do is put on some safety equipment. Make sure we have some safety glasses on as well as some gloves. Since we will be cutting metal, we can never be too cautious. Another thing I do want to encourage if you're using headphones, please beware. This is a live test and it will be extremely loud. So the first thing we'll do is oil each tool and that way nobody has an advantage. We'll start out with a snap-on. Give it six drops of oil. Like I say, headphone users, beware. It is going to be very loud. So insert our chuck in the snap-on 
and we'll go to the bolt and we'll run it for 10 seconds and see how much damage we can inflict. So here we go. All right, so approximately six seconds and we cut the bolt completely in half with a snap-on, as you guys seen. Like I say, it's really hard to test the air hammer just because of the violent nature of it moving, but I'm doing the best we can with what we have. So I'll lock the bolt back in. And we'll do the chief. We'll oil it up. Six drops of oil. We'll get her bit in here. All right, so here we go. All right, as you guys could see, the damage that's done on the end of the chisel, it was sliding off going against the jaws, which is way harder than the bolt. Um, I say it's very violent trying to hold that against there, and you can see the chief done a good job. It did take a little while longer to cut it, but I think that was due to the fact of it jumping around and sliding off. So we'll try the rebar, see if that makes any difference. But the chief hits extremely hard, as you guys could see. So we'll lock this piece of rebar in here. We'll do the same test with the chief. As you see the damage to the bit, everybody's gonna have to fight the same problems. So we'll try about a 10 second lick on this and see what happens. All right, so that's the chief after 10 seconds of abuse. We'll do the exact same thing with a snap-on, I'll just move the rebar up a little bit so we can see the difference in it. It's really hard to hold it on there while all that's going on. All right, so that's both of them at about 10 seconds a piece. Maybe you can see the damage it's doing. There's not a whole lot of difference um, between the two. Both of them definitely hit extremely hard. I was hoping there'd be a more definitive um, proof in it, but <laughs> It takes nothing away from the chief, you know, 120 bucks versus $450. You know, the proof is gonna be in how well it holds up long term. And that's something I don't know. I can't answer at this time because I just got it. So we will be, you know, using it in the future. We can give you some updates on it, but, uh. Either way, you know, 
I've got quite a bit of damage to the jaw of the vise from how hard the chief was hitting, causing it to slide off the side when we was cutting the bolt. And um, both of them did a great job as far as, as cutting through the bolt. I wish there was a better way that I could test this as far as um, showing how strong each one of them is. But unfortunately, I don't have any kind of fancy scientific equipment. And I thought about driving, um, I've got a rear end, I thought about driving the bolts out of the spring hanger bearing, or swing, spring hanger bushings of it, but that's not really a fair test because one side may be stuck and the other side may be free. So it's kind of hard to judge, you know, what would be a fair test. And this was something I thought would be pretty close. But um, 129 bucks or 120 bucks, whatever it was, you know, I don't think you're going to go wrong with this because not everybody can spend $450 on a snap-on air hammer or $430 bucks on a Matco air hammer. So I definitely think for the money, this will be a good air hammer. It feels good in your hand. Um, the grip feels really good. It's actually a little bit more narrow of a grip than the snap-on. Uh, it, it feels good in your hand. feels pretty balanced to be as big as it is. I don't think you have any issues with it, but who knows? It's brand new. Like always, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you like it, be sure to hit that thumbs up and click that subscribe button. It's free. never costs you guys a dime. Y'all have a great week, and we will catch y'all next time. See ya.